All right. This is going to be the biggest PvP battle we have seen in OFCRA to date. We are really, really close to Russian numbers here in terms of those rare Russian versus Russian communities where we see numbers in the 200s, anywhere from 215 to 230. This officially is 198, and it's been steadily going up these past, I want to say, 10, 15 minutes. But here, as a proof of concept, let me put this up real quick. There you go. 198. That is absolutely incredible in my opinion that we're getting this close with OFCRA the numbers keep climbing I absolutely Sending love it team six oh, oh man love me some Zagan thanks for the 21 month resub hope you keep enjoying the operations I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario we have a lot to work with I'm gonna do one more check on my side I'm still organizing the POG up For tonight, this will be the last thing I edit with everything until after the stream. All right, we should be good at this point. So let me go ahead and uh, cover polling real quick. Portuguese Armed Forces versus MPLA. Let me set a prediction up. And let's get this going. For MPLA. And we'll set that for 15 minutes. Because I'd imagine normally OFCRA missions start by now, and actually they're starting right now. All right. Let's see how this goes. Croatian boy, welcome. Daz, Daz, Dragoon, Lopsu, how are you all doing? Factions are going to be... That's the sound of about nearly 200 players Hello. going into the TFAR channel, Hello. so... He's, he's... There you go, it's gonna take... <laughs> it's gonna take TeamSpeak a hot second to get everyone synced out like that, but alright. Here we are. Ten minutes of warm-up. We're going to go ahead and get everything set. Uh, MPLA Send is in Chinese. They're uh, African. Excited for Pog action. tonight, LCA Playa Yaya. And yes, we will get to Pog tonight. I'll explain that afterwards. But let me go ahead and explain the point breakdown and then get everything covered here. So the overall objective is to capture the village of Mandalari. Whoever has control of that village by the end of the game gains four points. There is a northern and a southern T-34 pillbox, which are indicated right here. These vehicles cannot be moved. They are targeting, uh, targeted to be destroyed. If Blue 4 is able to destroy the northern one within the 50-minute mark, they get uh, one point. Uh, southern one goes up, then they get a second point. And if they destroy both by the end of the game, they gain three points. Meanwhile, Op 4 is all about defending those objectives as well. I am not sure they can be crewed, but I am going to do a quick look over real quick. Just, it just says they're using this fixed defenses, so I think they could actually be utilized defensively. So we'll just have to see how things go with that. But it looks like that's all the information I can glean. There's also something about a T-28. This mission is hardcore Cold War. Mission with no uh, short-range radio or no body armor play safe, meaning if you get shot once or twice, you're pretty much out of the game. All right. Hold on real quick, real quick. I just saw two people jump in team speak, which means... Nope, we're still at 198. Okay. So it's people fluctuating in and out trying to get in, but we'll see how things go. Uh, Blue 4 looks like they're spawning in two separate locations. Op 4 are in one. So uh, let's see. Blue Force Commander is going to be flip for flap. Op Force Commander is going to be Depso. Depso is annoying me. He keeps coming in before we start the stream and giving me uh, Twitch streamers to these, like, porn stars mm -hmm. and whatnot, but not his actual yeah. Twitch URL. So it, it, it bugs me greatly. But 
Colonel Candy, thanks for the six-month resub. Uh, we'll talk about Pog in a second, but hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. But otherwise, op for MPLA forces. We've got SKSs, AKs, PPSHs, IGLAs, RPGs. We're trying to see what else we've got in play here. We've got some... Uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, M1 Garans. Definitely an insurgency-based force. Is that an RPD? We do have RPDs in play. The new weapons from uh, 3CB Factions. Awesome. Oh, we got some STG-44s down. Looks like they're trading out some of the weaponry with each other as well. Some RPKs in play as well. We got some BTR-40s with Dishkas on top. Truck transports. And it looks like that's it for their vehicle support. Weaponry-wise, it looks like that's it. I do see some uh, Mat 49s as well, the French submachine gun. Is that a scope? Nope, that's just an M1 Garand. All right. Not sure if Op4 have any marksmen or dedicated groups for that, but it looks like their squads and even platoons are pretty much that level of weaponry. Not seeing any grenadiers, not seeing any scopes, but that is a okay. Very limited for their gear, but uh, I mean, it is MPLA versus Portuguese, so it should be limited. Uh, Portuguese players, meanwhile, we've got uh, HKG 33s, I believe? No. It's the frickin' G3 uh, West German. It's a 20 round 7.62 battle rifle. I think it's the HK. I think it's the G33. I could be wrong with that. Or it's the G1A3. We got uh, Uzis in play as well. But if someone wants to correct me, feel free. It is the G3, yeah. Uh, we got some MG3s in play because they'd be rechambered in um, 7.62 by 51 at this point. We've got some M79 Grenadiers in play. Yes, we're going to definitely need to see some of that. It looks like that's the main battle rifle. we got some uh, M72 Laws as well. Yeah, just the G3. Yeah, the G33 is a different gun. I think that's um, I think it's a 5.56 rifle, but I don't know. There's so many different guns to memorize. People poking their heads through right here. But yeah, so it looks like there's a squad Grenadier with the M79. Otherwise, everyone else gets the G33, which, uh, God damn it, the G3, excuse me. Weaponry-wise, we've got multiple M113s with 50 cals on them. we got truck transports with 50 cal on them. And, yeah, that's going to be a lot of heavy machine guns across. I think almost every vehicle except for that little command truck right there has a 50 cal on. There's another platoon down here with it. And then Blue 4 also have air support, which is going to be in the form of an air assault group with a C-47 Skytrain. And then we got that T-28 with twin 50 cals on it, which is quite nice. That's one of the new planes from 3CB Factions. Uh -huh. Otherwise, these guys, we've got some Swedish M45s, we got some Armalite uh, AR-15 platforms. And it looks like that is it. Pilots just get handguns, but that is pretty much what we're working with today. But otherwise, again, uh, four points to whoever controls the village of Mendelera by the end of the match. If you get... HK33, not G33. My bad, my bad, BG. Regardless, uh, whoever controls the village by the end gets four points. If Blue Force is able to destroy uh, either of these 234 pillboxes by the 50 minute mark, they get one point. If they destroy both, they get two points. And then a bonus three points if they're able to do it by the end of the mission, not just by the um, 50 minute mark. It's only to destroy them initially for a bonus. Op4, meanwhile, defending them, they get the bonus. And then defending. I would assume that means that if one is destroyed and one is not destroyed, then neither side gets those bonus three points by the end of the mission. So it's going to force Op4 to at least hold two objectives, but since the number count is nearly at 200, I think we'll be fine in terms of dividing, because that means it's pretty much 100 v 100 right now, which means both sides have a little, a, about a company of infantry to work with across two to three platoons, so... That's why we see uh, the different groups spawning with these four different vehicles here. So it's pretty much, yeah, three platoons versus three platoons, company v. company. So, wow. Uh, I'd assume that means every squad is going to have um, not just a squad leader, but a platoon lead to organize them. You see platoon leads here. I think last time we had this type of mission, I misidentified that there were platoon leads in charge. But one of the big things about this type of mission is there's no short-range radios. And there is no body armor. 
which makes those 50 cals that blue four has all that more effective, especially when those shots ricochet. So op four, they're going to be very limited in having to hold their defensive lines here. Maybe we'll see them fan out and hold some more choke points because they know blue four is going to have to take them. This would be a really nice choke point to have, but that's more on blue four side. Op four is not going to be able to rush over there and take it. And op four only have a handful of vehicles with inferior uh, triple, not triple A, um, Technically, it would be because it's 50 cal firing in the sky, but that's not the turn I'm, uh, I'm looking for. Uh, inferior heavy machine guns, HMGs. Because you got to remember, the Dishka firing platform, it is 12.7, and it's only 50 round boxes. Whereas all of Blue Four's HMGs on their vehicles are going to be M2s, which have double that ammo um, at 100, which you can see oh, right there. So... I don't know. I mean, Blue 4 is definitely being given a lot of advantage. They've got the G3s with those 20-round uh, magazines, 762 by 51 So I'm going to be honest, one shot to the torso or the head, and any of these Op 4 guys are going to die because it's a big round. No body armor is going to tear right through you. Uh, Blue 4 also have M79 Grenadiers. So if Op 4 tries to do any defensive uh, parlays, they're just going to get blown away. Uh, Op 4, they do have static tanks to work with, to help defend themselves, but I mean, beyond that, 50 cal, I think sustained 50 cal can disable the turret up top. Not the front gun right here, but it's gonna be an interesting one. I wonder if those tanks have any HE rounds, probably just AP only, but we'll just have to see how things go. And right, oh, Rat Pick, I mean, you're missing a good one. This is nearly 200 players. This is gonna be the most ambitious OFCRA match we've ever seen. And Bobby, welcome. Bobby, I think you DM'd me a while ago. I just didn't reply because I didn't know what to say, but I saw you sign up for some ops, so welcome nonetheless. Uh, and then after this stream, we're going to be doing some mission dev immediately after for Pod tonight. Uh, I'm going to be showing off, building the rest of the file, showing off what we have upgraded. And then, uh, obviously, then we have the next Pog pay for campaign mission tonight at 8 o'clock. Anything goes for that. I've also uh, started putting a draft up for next month's uh, operations for the viewers to fund through Daisy donation, all that other shenanigans. All right, mission has officially started, and we're going to see how things deploy. I'm not sure if the aircraft's going to start locked here. Looks like the combat one's starting locked, but nope, these guys are boarding, so that one's going to be able to deploy immediately. And then Blue 4 have a casualty. Oh, now he's head bugged, so we'll just have to be medic in there, but otherwise Blue 4 starting to move their forces out here. And we'll have to see how things go. The Lance Corporal Liru Battle Pass. Nah, it's just a way for you guys to fund additional operations, because people have been asking me for more 40k or more contracting or various other subtopics. So, you know, I'm trying to provide that for you guys, but at the same time. It takes away time from other things, so that's why we have the D funds for everything, so, you know. Or donation funds, I don't know. Wait, it's because I called it D. Oh, you go for a donation call all the time, so I'm just used to saying D instead of donation, but nonetheless. Oh, so much work, and I gotta show you guys what we've been working on for that special Stargate project. It's really fun. Alright, nonetheless, Blue 4, they're gonna be spending at least 5 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't know why I started with five. Yeah, 15 minutes at least maneuvering around. It looks like the whole map is open for this round, so we'll just have to see how things go. Plane's stuck on the runway. I think there's going to be like a five or ten minute wait before they can actually deploy to let Op4 actually move their forces out. What does SPAA stand for? Because I know it as anti-air and anti-air artillery, which is such a funny term. But it looks like the C-47 Sky Train is starting to take off, and she's already in the air. But I'd imagine the T-28 is probably holding on standby at the moment. Self-propelled AA? Ah, fair. I guess SPAA and AAA would be technically interchangeable. I mean, it can drive itself. Ah, gotcha, yeah. So it doesn't need to be towed by a logistics vehicle. It can just go on its own. So no, there is a difference there. All right, fair enough. I'll start adding that to my terminology then. 
So this is the second mission of this type of OSCRA campaign. The first mission was done in this village. Blue 4 won it, and that's why Blue 4 started in that position. I'm going to be honest, uh, Op 4 kind of divided themselves way too much in the line, and Op 4 pretty much... Um, I might have said blue for them, and Op 4 divided themselves way too much on the defensive line, and blue 4 came in on three different fronts and just absolutely capitalized on it and racked up a massive amount of multi-kills, and it was just a pretty nasty set of fighting here. We have another wounded guy in the 113. Don't know what that's part of, but we'll see uh, with this number boost, because that was probably, I think, with 140, 160 players, something around that for the first round. This one being nearly, you know, 100 v. 100, anything can happen at that point. Attacker's probably going to get a slight number advantage, though, of at least, you know, 10%. So, realistically, we're probably looking at something like 108 versus 80. No, that would be too much. It would be... Eh, no, 100 and... Probably 108 versus uh, 82. No, 92 would get us to that. So, yeah. 15 player difference with that the attackers but again i mean blue four having those m79s is going to be a pretty big game changer if they can get them up to uh where op four's defensive lines are plus uh there's no scoped rifles in here it's all iron sights so that kind of evens the advantage of having all these 50 cal picks for blue four to just do some pretty heavy suppression we'll just have to see how things go but patches i am doing a-okay -okay, broski how are you Feel free to stick around to the end of this stream, buddy, or at least the end of this match, because then we're going to go uh, do some dev for Pog, and I can show you what's uh, on the docket. Nonetheless, we're just going to relax, hang out, have fun. Right, oh, Bobby. I mean, I think I'm the only person in the world that makes their living off of doing all this, so it's fun. But I work for including my own nine different communities. And I had someone email me yesterday asking for uh, some scheduling. So that might become ten communities in a week. So that should be interesting. Plus I have to run an advert for uh, another guy, which we're going to probably start tomorrow. I just have to finish up on it. I have a script for it, but it's a 30-second clip to show you guys where another... Uh... It's a website that tracks a bunch of different Arma 3 communities and allows new players to find communities that they like, and I've always been an advocate for things like that because one of the hardest things in Arma 3 is finding the group of players that you vibe with, so... And I'm going to get paid for it, so even better. <laughs> But I also asked them if I could uh, potentially put my commission word out on the site, too. So that number of nine communities I'm working for might jump soon. So, Whew. oh, boy. Uh, how long you want for that request in the mod room for the bot? Uh, as whenever. I mean, that's something that if, we're, if we need to make our own bot for it, we'll outsource for it. But that, that can be talked about in DMs. All right, so paratroopers have been deployed literally, God, one, two, three, like four clicks away from the AO. I get it. It's because they want to keep them spaced out, but that's that's going to be quite the hike. Honestly, I prefer seeing paratroopers as a bit of a shock infantry group, but it's very risky to do that because they're going to be under heavy fire. So this just means they want to deploy them in earlier. But I'm going to be honest, in this scenario, I think the paratroopers would be best to use as a distraction. Deploy them like two and a half clicks away from where Op 4 spawned as a bit of a shock and awe element. But of course, that means you have to get them in the air like ASAP. Because if you wait too long, then Op 4 might be two and a half clicks away from their spawn. And then you'll just get, you know, immediately killed when you land. But deploying them four clicks out just means they're going to be spending a lot of time maneuvering, but if Blue 4 is going for a plan where they're going to be spending a lot of time maneuvering their vehicles around anyway, then that's fair. And you do see that, you know, we got 113s going all the way to the southern side of the map, so they'll probably try to come in and hit from the south. You've got other vehicles coming all the way around to the north, so Blue 4 might very well try to hit this AO from literally all sides. And that's going to be really interesting considering Op 4 is doing a full 360 defense here. 
and it's a 100 v 100 so they have the numbers to do it and that's what i'm super excited about <laughs> because holy crap it's rare when you can see an objective on like a two by two kilometer scale here and then we're actually going to have the numbers so that everything can be hit on all sides i mean if blue four can coordinate this right and they can hit all sides at the same time I honestly don't know what's going to happen. This is not the biggest event I've seen, but this is within the top five because the uh, Russian Ops, I think I've only covered three sessions. One of them had two runs. One of them had another two, but I was only able to cover run. And then there was another one where I was able to cover another two back in the day. So in terms of session count, this is within the top five. But I think the biggest amount of PvP... Uh, group v group, I think, was 240. So 120 versus 120, which was, I think, three infantry platoons and then vehicle platoons and supporting assets. People seem to be getting flung from their vehicles, which is quite weird, but... I'd imagine when you start getting to 200s, though, that's when some weird arm of magic starts getting spotted here, but... Ooh. Looks like someone dropped way late. He's gonna have another... <laughs> two and a half kilometers to catch up, but I, yeah, no, he's gonna have a long walk-in, that's for damn sure. Op 4 has RPGs. Blue 4, I only saw M72 Laws, which is gonna be really difficult for actually getting up to those, uh, to fix it. Am I allowed or am I quiet? Those okay, vehicles. Yeah. I'm checking everyone's AT just in case, but I think I'm just seeing M72s. They might have a second one in their backpack because they're single shot disposable, but they're also small. But there's a lot of crazy things that can happen here. I think these uh, air uh, airdrop forces, which are labeled as commandos here, I'm not sure they have any AT. Can nope, they do have AT capability. All right. Now, this is just going to be a massive waiting game as we have a blue four pretty much move all their forces into position. OFCRA, as a reminder, is a 90-minute round, a single round we cover every week. And I like to divide it in the first 30, uh, in three 30-minute chunks, excuse me. First 30 minutes, your early game. In an ideal OFCRA situation, this is when you have just a bunch of maneuvering. Uh, now, by the way, side note, now that the uh, transport plane has done its job, it's going to start flying over the AO, possibly to try to draw out uh, Iglifier, because uh, Op4 did spawn with a few man pads as well. So the more man pads this plane can drain, the more likely the T-28, once it actually deploys, uh, won't be shot down by a man pad because they're all exhausted on this transport plane. So pretty much a sacrifice play that this vehicle is doing just so the armed vehicle can have an easier time and it might be able to actually look down and get some scouting data based off of what it watches so this is uh mr midget here he's looking out he might be able to spot some defensive positions from his cockpit but i'd imagine we might see an igla gunner take the bait and actually try to engage him but anyway first 30 minutes uh in a normal OFCRA game, sometimes you see rushes happen. You see all these crazy plays happen with uh, when OFCRA is around, I want to say the 120 player mark, which is, I would say the average player count, but the player count has been growing steadily these past few months. And now we're up to 195 plus, AKA 200. So, oh, regardless, I would assume going forward, first 30 minutes are just going to be dedicated to the attacking faction maneuvering and getting their forces in play. Mid-game, the middle 30 minutes, that's when you're going to start seeing some real action start. That's when the attacking faction is going to start moving forces in. And then late game is when you're going to start seeing the second half of the objectives uh, starting to get scored, especially for the endings. Uh, and by then, you usually, I want to say towards the beginning of end game, after the hour mark, you'll see the uh, winner start to emerge. But again... That's just the average. Anything can happen in those 90 minutes. You have no idea how things uh, can play out. I've seen entire uh, squads get ambushed, but their side still wins by the end because the uh, squ uh, side that was ahead decides to make a few really bad calls on the squad and even command side, and it just all falls apart. If anything, I'd argue if uh, one squad gets ambushed early on, 
and then nothing happens for a while. Usually the squad that does the ambush, or the uh, side that, you know, successfully did the ambush loses, statistically, which is a weird thing to say, but I can recall multiple instances in OFCRA where one squad kind of rushes ahead, gets wiped, and I don't know why, but that just puts the entire enemy group in a false sense of security, and then they just get bulldozed later. It's weird. But that has happened multiple times in OFCRA, so it's it's pretty much unpredictable. Now, I'm a little worried with what I'm seeing here, and I'm going to try to make sense of it. We have Blue 4 advancing on a defensive line. We've got these guys holding back here as if they're on reserve. I can't tell. It looks like Lolo's talking with the squad leaders here. He might be trying to organize his guys for a push. And then these guys are starting to dismount all the way out here. So immediately what I'm worried about is let's look at this numbers, uh, these number, uh, numerically, excuse me. These guys go in, it's 20 guys versus another, you know, 30 here. They can get reinforced and now this 20 to 30 becomes 40 to 50. These guys are going to get wiped, and these guys, since they have such overwhelming firepower, aren't going to take that many casualties. Then let's say this group moves in. Same thing happens. Everything over here then pushes over, helps with the assist on the defense. These guys get overwhelmed and wiped. And let's say by now Blue Force has lost about 30-40% of its force. Looking at it, I want to say 20-30% to 30 because this is only one of the platoons and this was just one squad. But you get the point. But Op 4, let's say they've only lost, like, you know, 10 guys out of that engagement. Blue Force lost 30. Then these guys push in. Same thing happens. Same result. Then these guys push in. Last force of 30 guys fighting roughly 70-80 to 80 dudes. It's called defeat in detail. When you have a number advantage, and Blue Force does because they're the attackers, usually they get another 5 or 10 players uh, because they get that extra percentage, especially when it's 100 v 100 right now. But if you just push your forces in one at a time and allow your opponent to bring additional forces in and defeat you, even when you overall have the number advantage, but if you segregate yourself and only push in certain groups at a certain time just for them to get wiped, it's called getting defeated in detail. And that is how a lot of really good generals over the course of history have beaten numerically superior forces because they draw them out in firefights like these. Looks like Op4 has a few static uh, 12.7 uh, weapon platforms here in the form of Vishka's just some yeah alright so we've got quite a few down actually uh, we got two right here you got another one right there and I'd imagine there might have been another one right here but they moved it because you do have the uh, sandbags there and then they got the Dishka's kind of all around the village I guess to fall back on You've got the transport plane, the C-47, honestly doing a great job. The tank actually just tried to hit it. That's beautiful. Very unlikely it's going to hit. Also, the tank's got to be careful where it points the main barrel because it could overpressure. It went over. Fuck. <laughs> They're cursing out the fact that they missed it. Also, I have not written my highlight stamps down. One second. All right, if anything funny happens, I will go ahead and timestamp stuff. Regardless, the thing about digging big trenches like these is that air can easily spot them, and if air is paying attention, actually air would know their position because they get a built-in GPS, even if it's older equipment because of how Arma works. Uh, so they'll get a rough estimate of where these defensive areas are. And again, that's going to then, because they'll probably put it on their map, and everyone can read their side uh, side's map. Uh, so Blue 4 can start figuring out where Op 4 actually is. There's an old quote uh, from an old TV show where they say, and knowing is half the battle. And in PvP, that is especially the case. Because if you know where your opponent is, especially where their fortifications are, you can bypass them and then hit them on the rear and nullify those fortifications. <laughs> or just completely circumpass, uh, circumvent them. Circumpass, excuse me and then just push right to the objective and then force your opponents to abandon them to come to you, and then by then you're in a defensive position to fight them. And the other half is violence. Yes, that's how PvP works. My yo-yo. I am not Father Liru, not yet. Give me a few years, though, and I might be, uh... <laughs> Can you imagine me with, like, a one- or two-year-old on my lap and I'm trying to do my job and... <laughs> God... By then, we'll probably all be on Reforger, and I'll be uh, 
angry over the fact they still haven't put a mission editor in yet. <laughs> the literal magic markers of uh, Arma's tools. Well, yeah, you gotta remember, it's a video game, though, so... There's still ways to send information to everyone despite limited radio technology. Which, by the way, there's long ranges only, there's no short ranges. It's meant to be like a Cold War-style mission in the 70s. Which is why there's also very... There's no scopes at all. No body armor. And a lot of older gear. So we got Blue 4 on the map pushing up to these Op 4 positions. Let's take an actual map view of this. It's all pretty heavily forested. Op 4, though... What I'm a little worried about is, you know, when you're looking at the macro side of things, it looks like all these positions are really close to each other. But when you actually scale in, this entire box is a kilometer. So these positions are actually about 800 or so meters away from each other. That's a bit tough. I get what Op4 is doing. They're trying to set up a big sphere so they can, you know, catch anything that's coming in and then potentially fall back to the actual objective positions. But they've also incorporated some of the T-34 pillboxes in that sphere. So I'm really worried about we're potentially going to see a repeat of the previous mission two weeks ago where Op4 kind of put themselves out way too far and they're just going to get swept position by position even if Blue 4 have only one of their platoons out of the three and then the uh, commando element coming in. Also, T-28 took off and it is in a holding pattern with the C-47. Interesting. But even if we have these positions um, or Blue 4 separate out like this, if Hop 4 have separated themselves out to be more than a few hundred meters apart and they can't support each other, these groups can easily overpower those single defensive positions, especially considering that each squad does have an M79 gunner, and if that M79 gunner knows what the hell he's doing, a few well-placed grenade rounds in a defensive position like this where there's no body armor are going to shred people. And they can just put that M79 in their backpack, pick up an enemy gun, and go ham. But we'll see how powerful those noob tubes are today. I'm holding them in high hopes, but again, it's all about who's controlling them. Same with mortars. So we've got Black Shadow here with that M79. Let's see how well he does with this group going in. But like most weapons in Arma 3, it really depends on who has it. If you give uh, Savant an M249 in PvP, he will absolutely wipe the floor with everyone else in, with that weapon platform. Because that is one of the most powerful weapons in all of PvP for no. Arma 3. Same with an MG42 or an MG3, as long as they know how to control the, st uh, the recoil of the gun. Nothing can beat that thing's uh, fire rate, especially if they're given 100 or 250 round boxes. Or, or, or uh, I probably butchered that, I apologize, but thanks for the resub nonetheless. Hope you keep enjoying the operations, and hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. It is also quite possible that Blue Four might just walk, pack all these, uh, walk, yeah, walk past all these defensive positions, which does put Blue Four in a little bit of danger, because that means they'll open up on the objective here, and then these Op Four positions will bounce in and then end up encircling that Blue Four element, and then you'll really see a defeat in detail. It's rare, but once in a blue moon, we do see a blue four position move in and get flanked by one or two positions. But looking where, where blue four might come in from on the north, they've got three positions that can then encircle them literally on all sides. But it looks like op four are pulling some of their forces out, probably realizing they're too far forward and trying to redeploy so they can be a bit closer. But it looks like they're heading right over to this op four position. But this op four position's holding back, so I think they're just tightening their lines. And then we have another group of op four heading south, so they could also just be patrolling the forest at this point. I mean, this is crazy how close it is at this point. We just had uh, we're hearing the T twenty eight firing some fifty cal down. I think it was firing at this position right here, but now we're hearing some short, uh, some small arms here firing at the C-47 Skytrain. Tank fires again. It's very hard to hit an air asset with a main gun. Hold up, Dishka is coming up now. 
if they knew Blue 4 was right there, they would not be all mounted like that. How did how does Blue 4 not hear that vehicle coming? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's going to be devastating. Oh my god. Yeah, so Rigel's cleaning blue four up right here. Tootie's coming around to try to get some rear shots on whatever's still alive on op four. What was that? Talk about delayed reactions. If you're hearing, I don't get why Blue 4 didn't react to that vehicle when they all dismounted. Another bit of Blue 4 engaging. It was Ash and somebody else. M79's going out. Honestly, he should, he should be saving that ammo. Tootie was just found and killed by Cuboid. Oh, that might have been Rigel again. Rigel's on five kills with that Mad 49. Yeah, I think Rigel came back and got that kill. Demovar, meanwhile, AFK just sitting next to his dead buddy right here. Judy did steal, yeah. What the fuck happened? Judy had AT as well, but it's alive. that's weird. But yeah, no, they. Op for saying they got ambushed. Dude, they just ambushed a squad of blue for. But this is going to pull up for now to start patrolling this area. These guys responding to the fact that we've got white smoke out here. I'm curious to see what else pulls into this region here because of this white smoke. But again, Blue Force sending those forces in. You got a northern and a southern group also pushing in as well. Bodies being double, ta uh, double tapped down there. But yeah, massive miscommunication on Blue Force and Op Force. And then you just had that north where units literally north pulled north up north into north each north other. Northwest, northwest, we need to go here. So Op4, they're reporting the guys out here. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna I think that's not ours. Uh, yeah, that's definitely not yours. Shoot an M79 into it. Not us, not us, not Please. Us. Black Shadow, 79 him. Come on. Yes! Sorry. That's what I'm talking about. That's how powerful that M79 is. And I'm glad I was able to get a shot of that. You put that in this defensive line and it's even damaging the trenches somewhat. Oh, and he just got headshotted by Zaheer, I believe. Oh, it might've been Adam. Yeah, no, it was Adam. Yeah, he should have stuck in cover as soon as he took shots, but hopefully someone will loot it. Let's see if Op4 can send. Yep, so we got additional forces coming in from the north to reinforce and cut off that Blue 4 group coming in. I don't know why we have a Blue 4 group across the river. That seems like a misplay or communication or something. Meanwhile, they're looking at abandoned Op4 positions because now Op4 is trying to close the net around this force. Rigel, though, five kills up. He is hungry for blood. Oh, he definitely wants more. Blue 4 is not going to be pulling any side security, I bet. They're going to be too busy focusing on this open engagement, giving Rigel the perfect opportunity to come up. And look at how Blue 4 is. They've all got a battle line right here. Some have pulled off to the right. This is easy pickings for Rigel. Rose going to get kill number six. Doesn't get the double tap. Kills Chewie. That's his kill number six. Waiting to see if we see a double tap there. Another guy got taken out. I just heard an Igla launch. And there goes, is that the 28? That might. That's the 28. He recovers, though, from a dive. And he's uncon, so he might be able to recover from that if he wakes up. We'll check that in a second. I just heard a tank shoot at another plane again. Cuboid's come up. He's looting the weaponry off of Blue 4 here. No double tap on Mile, but no body armor, so I doubt he'll uh, actually wake up. Checking the plane, he is still unconscious. But the plane has leveled. 
We'll see if he wakes back up. Sometimes when you're gunned from an Igla, you'll wake up. Sometimes you won't. Meanwhile, uh, Miles still uncon. Rigel doing some double taps. And we got a few blue four guys that have actually pulled around to flank the defensive position here. One shot from Bovin, and he is on his second kill. He might get drunk here. Panic front, only to get blown away by Zixmi on the Dishka saving drunk. Scion here, staying low. He did utter a profanity, because I think his battle buddy just got taken out. Does drunk come over and find him? Zaheer also coming in. Oh, Scion in a bit of a shit here. AT fire coming in, getting a multi kill on more blue four. Holy shit! Who? Q boy just made a fucking three kill shot with that stolen. That's amazing. That was pinpoint. Scion coming in, he gets a kill. There's more blue four firing up on this position though. Demovar staying low, but he is now taking friendly fire. Those M79s from that Blue 4 group are shooting. These guys cross the river and are starting to breach into this position. Demovar comes out. Scion, I think, notices that Demovar is there. He's going to run up and get the tap as Demovar bandages, and that's a tap off. Ibno Main, I think, notices Scion, blows him away with that MG42. No, that is a stolen MG3 from one of the dead Blue 4 squads. But can we give a second to recognize? That pinpoint AT shot by Cuboid, that was at least a few hundred meters. It was from Mills. That was a 300 meter shot because uh, Mills' body was pretty much right next to that fallen AT stick. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was Iander levels of AT. That is worthy of a timestamp right down. All right, so Blue 4 down to one squad maneuvering here, uh, but they've... Uh, reinforce the commando elements over here, and there's a gap that's opened up on the southern side because all of Op 4 has moved down to take out these forces. So Blue 4 might be in a position to exploit this. The northern group, though, is going to run into some pretty stiff resistance, but I'd say Op 4 right now has that number advantage as we see three groups wiped. How's the T28? Did it recover? It did. And she's still unconscious. So she's in a, a spin. So she might actually spin into the AO again at this rate because she's doing a slight left turn. That's funny as hell. I can't believe it. He's not dead. He's unconscious in the plane. He's just slowly <laughs> spinning. I think the 47's getting eyes on to see if they can contact her, but eh, ain't that funny. Uh, for meanwhile, coming around here, Zixmi lining up some shots, utilizing that BTR 40's Dishka. Henrich, I'm surprised he's not dead. There it is. Excuse me, that's his second kill with that gun. Oh, and he gets picked off by a headshot. Beautiful shot from Kofina here. And yeah, you see them slowly, the plane slowly doing its left turn so it might go over the AO again and take a second angle of shot. I will laugh my ass off if that happens. So we got some op for trying to come around here. Otherwise, we have a defensive line being set right there. So we have officially entered mid-game as well, because we're at the 41 minute mark. Again, there was eight minutes. Actually, no, for this one, I think there was 10 minutes of safe start time, which makes sense, because this is probably the biggest, this is actually the biggest OFCRA mission we've seen so far. Uh, so 30 plus 10 is 40, so officially entered mid-game. Some great early game action though, with one of the blue four platoons being mostly wiped, Op 4, did take a few casualties, but it is playing out like I said. They are getting defeated in detail. Blue Fork could, however, exploit this open gap to the south and start making it to these pillbox areas and completely cut off other Op4 forces because it looks like Op4 is getting antsy. They're pushing their forces out even further from their defensive line, which is going to further pull them away from each other and allow Blue Fork to capitalize on the groups that are still pretty well separated. 
We just have to see if the competence in the other blue four elements are there because I'm going to be honest, it was not there for that first group. Literally got driven up on and no one heard the vehicle coming. That's interesting. T28 check. It is slowly coming in. I swear to God, it's going to circle into this AO. And if it does, I'm going to laugh my ass off. I want to see it get Iglet. And strangely enough, Mile has not bled out yet. He got shot multiple times, though, so that's quite interesting. But I got to love Rigel here on six kills. Cuboid on three. Good call so far. HQ, this is Alpha 1 Affirmative, we need support, since we have still enemies in the area, I don't know how many... They're calling for support, there's nothing I here can... that can help them though, that's the sad part. Everything else is pulled away so far. You got Ivnoman coming around on the rear, he's got that stolen MG3. Also, people disconnecting and reconnecting, we're not seeing any desync spikes, I mean this Alpha server one, is beefy to get stuff like that done. We got a 1-1-3 moving up. However, Op4 have a squad right here. Roy's coming out with his RPG. Will he get the hit? His back blast is clear. Gets the hit on the rear. And immediately we have machine gun fire open up. Is Blue 4 gonna panic and start putting forces out? We need to see Roy. All right, here we go. Another RPG comes in. Now they're panically coming out. Oh, and it is a freaking massacre. Oh no! So Bluck got lucky by pushing his squad out here and they were able to literally catch an entire Op4 squad for free. Double Tap gets that guy that just woke up. It's only Seismone that's uh, still alive. He's just uncon, but that is an entire squad wipe for free right there. That is crazy. Meanwhile, looking over here, you got Op4 starting to push in on this remaining spot, but it looks like they're holding fast here. Because they're trying to identify where Blue 4 is at the moment. Maybe they don't realize that there are some guys here, but they should because they've already changed contact. Hold up. Down T28, now coming back into the AO. Literally has completed an entire circle of Damien being unconscious. That is amazing. I don't think he's right over the AO though enough to get Iglud, but at this trajectory, he's gonna keep circling the AO here. Tank just fired at him. That is so funny. The unconscious autopilot with a slight left turn. Even in death, he still serves. <laughs> The man has literally gone around the map and he's going to do it again. Tank round almost hits him. I'm waiting for an Igla gunner to come in and do something. He's he's still got fuel, clearly. But the plane's just flying itself at this point. It's his machine spirit, exactly. All right, Op4 making an advance. On this position. They're trying to hold. MG3 from Ivno Main starting to suppress their position. Kafoni gets knocked out. He's the guy that got that pickoff earlier. Cuboid's coming in on the rear. Can he make four kills? He does. Arabmus comes in, stops Cuboid. Rigel comes in, a little bit of decent kicks in. And I think he just scored both. Rigel on nine kills. A little bit of desync to save him. Cuboid on four before he dies, but wow. And we're gonna see. We're going to see Damien do another circle. We'll see where he ends up after his next rotation. <laughs> There's no way he's weighing back up, though, because he's, he's kind of stuck on the nap. Blue 4, meanwhile, we see them engaging out here. I don't think there's any bodies. I think these guys are potentially... Maybe they're seeing the truck out here, but Op 4 are returning fire. Blue 4 might potentially push in another squad... Over to check out what happened to this one vehicle. I'd be curious to see if anything was stolen. If anything, Op4 definitely looted the grenades. And they stole the MG3. South, southwest. Push, 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 push. Same thing again. Push and they stole the laws. So they're pushing out to that 113, which is dismounting now. Oh, these are these are my guys. Lolo, Sismo. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for him. Now this Op4 position's in a pickle because they are engaging, ooh, these are the uh, airdrop commandos, the air assault guys. 
They've got the uh, armor lights and they got rifle grenades. Yeah, they're that literally reached halfway. They're gonna have to literally get up to the tree line's edge to use those. Top four wanna rush right into that position. Might be costly here. They hear the vehicle going. I just heard the rifle grenade fire again, but again it falls short. That one they got a little bit closer, but it's they gotta be saving those. So that just shows me that uh, the guys using them are unfamiliar with that weapon system, which is fine. I mean, that's, I think it's rare to find uh, AR-15s in play. Um, Armalite AR-15s, which I think are either 3CB factions or New World Armory. Anyway, Op4 getting in direct engagement with Blue4, 18 misses. Lolo is killed off. Shay is unconscious looking at the Op4 squad though. How is Shay all the way over here? Wait, so how did Cuboid end up all the way over there with Rigel? If he's supposed to be with this group? Okay, whatever. Lolo, I think, is trying to get a pickoff headshot. But he doesn't because there's no one in the gunner seat. Interesting. This Blue 4 group tried to move up. They are now being repelled. And this commando element has pulled back as well. They have a KIA. So that Op 4 position is holding. And it looks like this blue four element has mostly been wiped. It's just Sam and Alexander at this point. Sismo and Saber have been killed off. They had Lolo with them. He just disconnected. Remember, there's multiple Lolos here. Sam trying to move up and smoke it. He's got to be careful, though, because we probably have some RPGs ready. Roy's getting his out. Oh, really nasty smoke placement. Roy's not going to risk it because he knows there's going to be more vehicles for him to fight. A lot of smoke deployed. Sam's trying to move with Alexander. But Alexander gets spotted by Block and taken out. Those PPSHs, man, with those fire rates, even, if, even though it's only 9mm. Oh, life to the MPLA. Yeah, that's the new slogan because they are kicking the Portuguese's ass right now. And now they're pushing and assaulting the uh, the 113. No, Lolo just ran into it. Lolo point blank shoots it, kills himself, but he gets the kill. Lolo is a hero of the MPLA. <laughs> oh my God. He didn't want to let it get away because he knew if he let it drive through the smoke, it would. So he risked it for the biscuit. And he gets a kill going down as a hero. They're shooting through the back to penetrate. They get the dead driver out. My god. Now you're going to have Blue Force start attacking the Strawn side to the north. I mean, it is a massacre at this point. Blue 4 only down to a few squads on the south. They're going to be able to exploit the gaps, though, and get right on top of the pillbox. So I'd say Blue 4 isn't out of the game yet. But so far, Op 4 have been pretty decisive in the fighting. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Hold on. Unfortunately, the plane finally ran out of fuel. And somehow, perfectly... Re yeah, it definitely ran out of fuel. It was able to rest itself like this. And Damien's lifeless body has gone down. Wow. That's an art sculpture. This is what they call modern art, right? <laughs> the autopilot finally got EP. Actually, it didn't. It just ran out of fuel. But don't worry about that. <laughs> Still have the 47 flying over. But no one's going to fire at it because it's just a transport. This is interesting though. We're seeing some groups breaking off from the north and starting to move south. So as Op4 try to plug the gap here, that's gonna weaken the northern gap and we've got a pretty nice platoon of forces coming down. However, they're spread out at a kilometer. So they're not gonna be in a position to support each other if they run into an enemy position. Speaking of running into enemy positions, Blue 4 have run into an enemy Op 4 position, and it's fortified. Do they have an M79 gunner? Yes, they do. So Toxic, 
needs to get some well-placed shots here, otherwise his squad is not going to be able to advance. Diego gets knocked down. Cal trying to suppress. Toxic unwilling to maneuver above. Looks like he's changing the round. He's firing smoke. And somehow lands the smoke right where he needs to land it. All right. Go Toxic, now do it with Frag. So I think they're using Smoke to try to deny Blue Four's ability, or Op Four's ability to engage him so Blue Four can move closer or they can move the vehicle closer. And suppress, the 50 cal doesn't realize it's well over range though. Oh, now it's making adjustments. It looks like this Blue Four position is now trying to flank some of the guys on defensive here. I just heard a rifle grenade engage. It looks like we had a commando group here get entirely surround, not entirely surrounded, uh, basically assaulted from the rear of an op four group, and they're pretty much getting ambushed. As this op four element is now sweeping right to left across this remaining area, looks like we've got this op four element now pulling back to try to assist, but these guys are going to be dead before they can arrive unless these two guys run away. Most of their squad has been eliminated. Three dead, one unconscious, two remaining. That is brutal. Meanwhile, the Op4 elements here getting suppressed, but they are decisively engaged with an element, but they're kind of in the open. We could see this group come up the tree line and assist them. RPGs firing out on their 113, but they're missing. Meanwhile, Blue 4 trying to maneuver forces around to get behind this element to keep them pinned. Not a bad call. We have some elements trying to flank, but they've got uh, Op4 up defensive lines here as well. Got some random suppression going out here. We got Feather that just woke up over here. And he goes to another nap, thanks to Germa. And uh, this time it's permanent. Poor Feather. All right, MPLA forces of the north starting to get encircled, but this is just their single... <laughs> their forward defensive lines. I appreciate we're seeing Twig King moving Blue 4 around to flank this defensive position. These guys are gonna stay pinned right here. Twig's gonna have uh, easy pickings up here. It's just, can he maneuver with more of his forces to get targets on point here? Because otherwise they're just gonna turn and engage him immediately. This off four group probably not going to move because Having platoons communicate can be difficult, especially uh, if these groups are in a different platoon. But it looks like Op4 are carrying their wounded and trying to get out of here, so that's gonna give some ground to Blue4 here on the north. Yeah, small arms engaging the C-47 again. Tank once again firing, wait a second. No, Tank was firing over here at the infantry moving in this group, multiple Blue4 down. Because the tank's literally right here. That's Natha, who has scored two kills because he does have HE rounds. <laughs> yeah, the, the T-28, I think its goal was to strafe and disable the turrets on the tanks, but unfortunately got eagled immediately. And now he's just going to shell these guys with HE rounds. That's pretty brutal. I don't think the tanks needed HE rounds to win this. I think they could have done this just fine with AP, but I do appreciate we have one Op 4 group pulling back with their wounded. I always appreciate seeing plays like that where, you know, they're not just leaving them behind. Twig's gotten his entire force up here. Op 4 are down to only four guys right now. We've got three dead bodies on the front line, one dead on the rear. I don't know why they all just left their entrenching tools here. We'll see if these guys can pull away. So we got this off four group now pushing over with this group, and they could sandwich the remaining blue four elements there as well. That's pretty nasty. Twig King opening up. They're trying to engage the forces on this position. As op four down to four, and we got blue four advancing further. More GLs coming right on where Toxic needs to be putting those M79 rounds. Can he get another 40 millimeter over? 
He d oh, I thought it was over, but it took a second for the game to catch up and realize it got caught on that little spot. He just needs to get it through this little slit right here. He would get such a nice multi-kill. Zero for BIA just got picked off by the flanking elements here. And Blue 4 now rushing over to this previous Op 4 position. Op 4, though, I think are turning heads and realizing that there's forces coming around. They got their BTR 40 turned as well. Looking at the rest of the map, though, Op 4 looks like that left side is actually pulling away, whereas the right side is now starting to move in, but they've got a small group of Blue 4 pushing in as well, so we'll check that later. Still have a pretty nasty assault here. Can someone remind me what the pull is for the uh, split on the bets between Op4 and Blue4? Enzu gets knocked out. I want to see what the numbered uh, desperation was because I didn't get a chance to see it. You got uh, Kaz here trying to get a shot on the gunner of that 113. He's unable. Vincenzo is pushing up with Panzel. Enzu wakes up. Grenade's being thrown over. Vincent can't seem to get those shots over as Enzu crawls over. Grenade gets thrown. Enzu completely ignored. Oh no, Vincent realizes that's a body but he doesn't notice and he gets a double kill. That's his third kill. Dimi comes around. Gets a kill. He's trying to call out if anyone on Op4 is still alive. Vincenzo looking around, doesn't spot the blind spot here to see that Dimi's still alive. Dimmy could get some retribution here as Vinzo pulls back to work on Panzel. That AK shot goes out. Vincenzo is not phased though. 41.2 Blue 4, 31.2 Op 4. Wow. So uh, it might be an upset here because Op 4, yes, they're getting creamed here. Dimmy gets his second kill. Vincenzo comes around, spots Dimmy, and gets his fourth kill now for the round. Great play there. He finally realized that those shots were uh, AK based, so he knew they were op for. And he's got Cam right back here to work on the medical. Good calls all around. We have this op four group coming up. They hear that one one three. This is that uh, group that already ambushed one uh, squad on their own. So Shay on two kills, Swola on two, Wombat on one. I think the rest of their squad got most of. Cuboid was on four, but he was somewhere else. Plus, a lot of their kills were grenade-based, and not uh, grenades don't always pick up those kill counts. Is Rigel still alive? I think he's still the kill king right now. Yes, he is. How many kills is he on? He is on 10. And he's picked up an enemy rifle. I'm not sure if he picked up any rifle grenades, too, but that would be pretty brutal. What do you need some medic? You were part of Delta Two for Blue Four and someone else was on the Dishka. Yeah, I've been trying to cover everything I can, but we're getting to that point where there's multiple fights going on at the same time. Op Four, finally, they did pull that group back. And now we're starting to see ambushing the remaining Blue Four groups to the south. And both of the pill boxes were protected by Op Four, so that's two points on the board. Another AT4 shot going out. That one's by Mikus. And I think he just scored a triple kill with it. There were at least two markers here. That's three dead guys. Those AT4s being used as shock weapons tonight have been amazing. First it was Cuboid getting three, and now it is Montes getting three. That is incredible. I absolutely love to see AT used against infantry, especially in a situation where there's no body armor. You fail to recognize until you get a mission like this on how effective Stuff like that is. I think his rifle grenade just went over the hill. It was completely off. He quickly reloads it. Gillette doing his best to hold off with those rifle grenades. Unfortunately, both were off. Now they're taking flanking fire from the south. Gillette goes down. It's only Jane still alive. But at this point, it is brutal here. Rigel still on 10. Let's just hope Op4 doesn't uh, friendly fire themselves. Grenade comes out, that's gonna go far. And Jane trying to push now with that 45. I know, Op4 is stealing Blue Force AT and getting the kills with it. Cheeseburger Barrows getting that 2v1 with Jane, beating that fight. Op4, meanwhile, the group down here is getting picked off. Ah, Glenn. I assume this is your group here then. Nice guy, Phil, his buddy just gets taken out. He's trying to get his RPG out. 
But Blue 4, I mean, from the north, they've got a good distance here, but Op4, they've regrouped, and now they have a solid defensive line against the remaining large Blue 4 element. I mean, this is the final group of Blue 4 to come in. We got a little bit of guys here as well. You got TK'd. Uh... So you had to have been TK'd by the group down here then because you were part of the guys flanking around. That's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. All right, so that entire off four element has been pretty much taken out. Literally up to nice guy Phil here. Can nice guy Phil channel his inner Audrey Hotto and manage to get a multi-kill with his RPG before he elapses? See, I made it easier for him to get this one. And you got a 1-1-3 one, one, all the way back here with Pierce. And... Oh, I see. Pierce has adopted a new strategy. Stay in the back and wait for everyone else to die, then charge the open field. Ah, you, Pierce. <laughs> what a chat. Look at Wonder here. He's in the back with an RPD. No, it's an RPK. Ooh. You think he could get in the back line and get some kills here? That would be pretty incredible. Come on, Phil. I know you're a nice guy, but these guys are literally trying to kill you, Phil. Come on, Phil. You got to be careful. You've got other forces coming in from the south, dude. Come on, Phil, I believe in you. You just backlasted yourself. Oh, your shot hit a tree. It looked like it was good, but he hit the tree. I think Wonder just got that one guy. No, Delta ran back, okay. AT4 shot goes over and misses. Wonder also, I saw him pull out an M79, but he was on four kills, right? No, he's on one kill. Uh, Delta was the M79 gunner that I saw. He's on four kills, yeah. Which makes sense, because he has the M79. Oh no, are they blue on blueing? Of course, the two remaining blue four elements here, the bigger ones, start engaging each other. I love it. Oh. All right, Phil. They're coming to you, so it's gonna make it easier for you to kill them. <laughs> I love you, Phil. Oh my God, one shot, Ugh. get down. I wanna see what Wonder does. He's got an RPK, he's got a 45 round magazine for it. At least I think he does. It would be incredibly based if he got in that 50 cal and took out the other pick with the 50 cal. Not even kidding. That would be incredible. Not the smartest thing to do. Oh, Phil! He tried! A grenade gets deflected off a tree. No! Phil! No! He got rock grenaded! The rock was facing him and the grenade got caught on the rock and Phil got grenaded. Uh, what a shame. Oh, no. Wonder's got... A fire team coming up to him. Blue four, meanwhile, in the village, we got two groups coming down. Did, please tell me you didn't just say that on yelling and they heard you. Oh, wonder. Oh, no, oh, nobody saw it. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Wait, the other blue four guys saw him. Oh, and he just got taken out. You know, these guys are freaking out. There's more op for coming. Oh, it's because they're French, because that's Mancho, the head honcho of OFCRA. Right. All right, well, Phil's position has been overrun. Rest in peace. Mancho double taps the body. Could revive Jack. And op for have blue four out number two to one. Closer to three to one at this rate, but op four have to be defending two pillboxes in the final objective here. So this will be the first part of the final fight. When these guys regroup, they'll push in as well, but that might give Blue Four enough time to defeat themselves in detail here. Op four on the rooftops have been getting taken out, but Blue Four have been taking a few casualties here. I'd be curious to see if we have a small detachment come in, but I don't think they're gonna abandon that uh, T-34 because they want to keep the points. 
Opor's only hope for reinforcements are going to be the southern groups, but once they come in, or they'll sweep up uh, the tree lines here and eventually flank, but this is pretty brutal. That better be a smoke. Okay, I was about to say. Please don't frag your friends. Oh, M79 rounds coming in. This is tough because it's a big village, though, but he has them ranged quite well, and we also have the defensive dish because... What would be well times if we had the 113s deploy and open up another avenue of attack, and then we could actually see Blue 4 take the village. But because we're constantly seeing defeats in detail here, I don't think Blue 4 is going to get this. <gasps> Wait, I forgot. They've got one squad with one leader who can rule them all. Will Pierce deploy himself into the AO and single-handedly win the fight? I'm hyping him up. He is one of my favorites for very particular reasons. I love Pierce. Let's see if he works. Wow, great pickoff by Viper there. We saw him get a double tap with that 12.7 uh, Dishka. No. Cameron Pazell trying to crawl away, but they've got the side leader himself, Depso, shooting at him with what I assume is, no, he's got an M1 Garand. The fact he's being that accurate with that thing, despite a smoke grenade in play, I mean, that's pretty incredible. Op4 are attacking Blue Force Garrison here with three dudes. We've got Wombat, Shay, and Swola. And all of them have drawn blood, and one of them has an MG3. They're just not within frag range. Got some 50 cals going in. Might be on Swola's position. I can't tell. Wombat tossing more grenades. That might be a frag. No, or they're... I think they're adding smokes here. Yeah. He's going to slowly advance through the smoke and hit him. And Blue 4 have no idea where they are. Oh, no. And Pierce has heroically deployed his forces in the back line. Good on you, Pierce. Maybe by the time you get into the AO, you'll be the only forces left. Shay and Wombat pushing on the flank. Wombat immediately spotted and gets blown away by Rizbo, who's on three kills. Yeah, Op4, clearly we see some players getting a little bloodthirsty here because Blue 4 are just going to wait in the trenches for Op4 to come in and, uh, you know, take care of them so it's a bit of a weird call but who knows blue form I uh, get co uh, antsy and push in and set so I don't know weird calls we got some suppressive fire coming in from over here they're trying to open up another attack Avenue on op for we see a, quite a few bodies here so some of the m79 gunners were pretty accurate but it looks like op for have abandoned that tank position, they're coming around to sweep the rest of the players here. They've abandoned both tanks, realizing that they can just hold the final objective and win. Op4 doing a great job. That's Depso commanding. He's telling his forces just come in and circle this final element here because it's clear that they are the final forces in the AO. So he's got everything starting to encircle the remaining Blue 4 elements here. Smart. Shay gets the pickoff on the gunner and kills the driver who just poked his head out. Nope, uh, Manarium poked his head out, but he was able to fold it back in quick. A lot of blind fire here as Op4 are just starting to trickle their forces in. I'd say Op4 at this point have a three to one number advantage in the round. I do appreciate them taking each other's equipment on the sides and using it against them. Shay's being incredibly tactical here, though. He is bleeding, though. But he's got no more smoke cover. He spots Rizbo and takes him out. Mm. I think that was a deployable smoke round. Neat. 
Yeah, they're just popping them on these uh, smoke rounds, maybe because they found the guy. If there was another guy running up, I think they took him out. So Shay, now he's gonna spend a second to bandage. Most of Blue Force lineup here has been taken out. I'm hearing RPGs firing. They're getting those RPGs up on these defensive positions. Oh, I would not put your foot. Oh, no. No, he blew himself up and killed two of his friends. Oh, my God. He just killed himself. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Wait before he disconnects. Yep. Jack killed three of his teammates. He killed himself in these two. No! The M79 strikes again, but it's unfortunately for Op4. <laughs> Nine Blue 4 players have died to M79s this entire game. I can't believe I just caught that. Oh my god. Three Blue 4 multi kills inflicted on them. Two by Op4, one by Blue 4. Jay crawling up. So you have this massive infantry push coming in from the remnants of another Op 4 platoon. These guys looks like they got engaged and were forced to pull back. They're only down to three people plus one wounded. That was probably, I actually have no idea who got that kill uh, or started that engagement. Jay getting taken out by, it looks like, Naki here with that M45. I guess Shay ran out of grenades. Now you got more Op 4 pushing in. This group is eventually going to get overwhelmed. They're going to push up further, sweep the rest. It's funny, we got Samuel and a machine gunner with uh, Arena here, but they aren't going to be able to destroy that uh, tank. It's... It's GG at this point, guys. In all honesty, there's not really anything Blue 4 can do. Blue 4 just defeated themselves in detail, and Op 4 were quicker on the maneuvering. Yep, Blue 4 had this uh, 113 here. It got taken out. Crew was able to bail out. I don't see any bodies around it, so I guess they pushed back to their defensive positions. Fourth final defense is still holding. They have another squad out here trying to open up another angle to flank the defensive groups up there. Doesn't help that that group killed themselves with uh, a misplaced loss shot. Arthiak just got another drop. Oh my god! Arthiak! Man just got a triple kill. That was pretty brutal. AT firing, misses. Oh my god, I'm so sorry about that. Don't you hate it when a sneeze gets like caught in your nose and you're trying to get it out and you're just kind of like stuck there moving your head? <laughs> I apologize. Looks like the pilot landed all the way out here. Because this is the pilot designation. I have no idea where he landed that, but he's just moving it on foot. All right, the op's going to be up to Mr. Midget. I believe in him. He has only a handgun. Another RPG came and cooked off the 113. And now Op 4 is starting to get on top of this position. Blue 4 down to four players. Is Rigel still alive? Rigel's a frontline player. I don't see him here, so I'm assuming he's dead. I'm looking for him. Yep, died with 10 kills. He was in that group that Arthiak took out. I'm not sure if anyone scored more than 10 kills here, but I'll do a check on the bodies when the op starts wrapping up because we will have some downtime as Blue 4 get uh, cleaned up. Skipu gets a great shot. I will kill you all. <laughs> He's stolen an AK. And yeah, that, uh, those 30 rounds of uh, fully automatic firepower are going to be needed for the fact that Op4 is pretty much charging these positions. 
Settler gets blown up by a grenade. Damien, yes, we literally saw you do an entire circle unconscious flight over the AO. We didn't catch you crashing, but we found your body because I wanted to check on you. Uncon and I literally completed an entire rotation. That was pretty funny. We'll pay for the knocker. And then you ran out of fuel and then you landed on your nose. Like, if you're still on the server, I can check real quick. Yeah. It's still on his nose. I still can't... <laughs> That's how I know he ran out of fuel and fell like this because otherwise... He just lost all speed and literally turned himself into a modern art sculpture. And he landed all the way up here, mind you. So he completed half of a second rotation. Unconscious. After he finally bled out. Alright, blue four coming around and trying to counterattack some of the op four elements coming in. I mean... You gotta give it to the blue four guys surviving here. They've done a great job, uh, as I say that. Uh, I mean, Op4 are doing a really great job. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's Op4 that are doing a great job, but blue four, they just got a kill, so now they're doing a great job. <laughs> God, the caster cursing back and forth. All right, blue four is doing a great job. Fuck! God damn it! Oh, that's just funny. All right, blue four down to two right there. All of the guys that have pushed up were taken out. You got the garrison that's come back. Pierce's group died. I don't even know what the hell they did. They got caught out here, so I guess they fire fought with the uh, four dudes out there. So what's these guys' kill count? Zero, five for Bravo, zero for Biggle. for Natha. All right. Eric trying to kick Marty here with an RPD. Eric on four kills. I mean, yeah. A lot of ammo in that weapon platform, that's for sure. And I think Op4 have a number advantage of five to one at this point. Blue4 are literally down to single digits. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Op4 probably around 20 to 30. Yeah, I really do need to shut up sometimes. The power of Caster Curse is a pretty terrifying me, power me, indeed. In front of me. In front of me. So, uh, Swift uh, up here, I think, just got taken out. Oddball on six, though. Well placed frag, but unfortunately. Op4 divided themselves so they won't go down to an easy frag. Good call on them. Oddball gets knocked out. And Bravo gets a double kill. Can he come around and knock out uh, Oddball for the... Uh, or Bravo gets the double kill. Will Oddball wake back up? 20 minutes remaining on the round. Blue 4 down to 4 with one Oncon for a fifth. Midget. Midget's made it. Can Midget. Ch oh, my God. He just got a kill. No, oh, he just caused Settler to get dropped. Can Midget. Ch Midget is dead. Anyway, we have Marty, a remaining commando with an AR-15 platformed weapon and an M72 law. And then we've got these two at an abandoned T-34. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. This op uh, was just a textbook example of defeat in detail. I mean, so was the first mission in this campaign two weeks ago. Marty unable. Oh, he gets the knockout. Did he just ring the dinner bell, though? Because I see a lot more op for now coming to his position. Uh... If Blue 4 take out both tanks, they get three points. Eric gets double taps. But Blue 4 does not have the manpower to take out both tanks. Oh, Depso's dead. Did he just... 
Marty just freaking aimbotted Ash and doesn't realize he aimbotted Ash because now he's got the M79 out. Noob tube. Noob tube. Wait. Blue 4 have stolen the tank and now they're shooting at... The colonizers got the T-34. The colonizers got the T-34. Oh my god! Alright, well, that guy died. So we need to get back to the southern T-34 and engage the northern <laughs> I need three heroes. <laughs> this means since they're going to have to destroy that 34 to kill the remaining blue four, uh, they're not going to get the three points for holding both tanks, but they'll get the four points for holding this village. They colonized our T-34. No, it's firing at us from the northeast. I'm waiting to see the dish get charged. I trust the walls. I'm waiting for one of these rounds to penetrate and take somebody out because it's AP ammo. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right. I'm waiting. Oh, wait, no, not on him. At this point, they might as well just be coming from the north. It is HE ammo. I'm surprised not many people have died, though. Oh! How are you alive? I, I think because it hit the outter wall. Also, I made contact with Bravo. from. Where is how are you all surviving? Honestly, there should be dead people here. Yeah, you're MPLA. Charge the tank. That should have killed Johnny. Oh, he's over here by Mitchell's slice somewhere. They're coming in from the. Who the hell has a Walmart T34? With these wish.com rounds. Good God. That's why you don't buy your ammo from Timu. God damn, it did nothing. Has it actually killed anybody? No, it's not killed a single person. OFCRA AG. I saw someone with the tank though fire. That specific tank killed two people. I guess because it's an OP4 tank. The OP4 tank can't kill OP4 people. It can only kill Blue 4 people. Oh, Blue 4 still their command element alive. Alright, I'm gonna do a quick check. Does anyone beat Rigel's 10 kills? Cuboid and Shay on their 4. Oh, they're blue on, they're red on redding. The tank. What? How did? But did the southern tank? No. That. But. Where is Serena? This can't stand up. <laughs> okay. He, uh, they armored it. I think they tried to drive it and it exploded. All right. Cool. As I'm checking, look for an armor kill just in case. So a little tank symbol.
Got negative one. Nice. Bravo on seven. I mean, that's the closest to uh, Rigel's ten. Oh, boy. It's okay, Samuel. I'm sure you'll survive, maybe. <laughs> uh, Sam, in fact, did not survive. He did not pass go, and he will not be collecting $200. What was Blue Force highest? I mean, most of them have left because they died, but Arthiok was on six. That's not bad. And here comes command. All right. So here's the deal. Final point tally is going to be six to Op 4, none to Blue 4. Both tanks survived the 50-minute mark, which gives Op 4 a tank, uh, point per tank. There were two. Uh, the second objective, hold the village by the end of the round. That's going to clearly be op four. And then there was a three-point tally for if either side either destroyed or protected both tanks. One has been destroyed. The other, I doubt, is going to be touched. But even if Blue 4 went out and did that, it would then be 6-3 instead of 6-0. So it is a Blue 4 victory. Excuse me, op four. Op four victory. Op four victory. God. My bad. They just instantly died. Wow. All right. I'm going to take a 20-minute break, go have a quick bite, because my stomach's been rumbling, and then we're going to come back with some mission dev for POG tonight. It is paid for campaign. So thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Pay it out to Op4, please, Azariah. And otherwise, cheers, and I'll be back in 20 minutes. Wow, that was brutal.